On Friday evenings at Waterford Crystal, they change the pots. The clay vessels that hold the molten glass must be removed from the furnace and replaced with new ones. The temperature in the furnace is over 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. In stores around the world, people who treasure handmade crystal are looking for Waterford. From those who've been collecting it all their lives, to the young couple who are just beginning. But behind every piece of Waterford is a story of skill, craft, and tradition. Hand-cut crystal is the celebration of light, the capture of its sparkle in every facet from the smallest cordial glass to a major trophy. And the cutters of Waterford are working in a long and rich tradition. One of the characteristic Waterford styles is flat cutting. And it begins, as they all do, on the hardness of the carborundum wheel. The carborundum carves the pattern, but the finish is rough. Every cut must be repeated for smoothness, this time on a sandstone wheel. And after that, there will be more polishing until the Curramore Continental Champagne glass reaches its final purity. Another of the traditional styles is wedge cutting. It also starts on the carborundum wheel, but this time with a sharp edge. This is the brandy glass of the Maeve pattern. But the most familiar characteristic is the depth of the cutting. It's the softness of the glass and the thickness of the blowing that allows this sculpture in crystal. And it's the skill of the cutters that will capture the diamond sparkle of light. It was the elegance and style of the 18th century that created the taste for high quality crystal. The Waterford factory was opened in 1783 and the techniques they used then are the same today. In the chambers of the city council are some of the original pieces that gave Waterford a world name for crystal two centuries ago. Some of the original pattern books have also survived, and many of these period pieces are still produced here today. Traditional claret decanter, like all pieces of Waterford, 
begins as a ball of molten glass. It is shaped with wooden instruments that haven't changed in 200 years, and it takes its life from the breath of the blower. This is the beginning of a process that will involve a whole team of craftsmen, each working in rhythm with the others. When the ball is finished, it passes to the next member of the team, the master blower. He must gather from the pot just the amount of molten glass he needs for the bowl of the decanter. No more, no less. He too will use the ancient instruments of his craft, the experience of a long tradition, and just the right amount of his own breath. Shaping the outside of the glass is not the only skill of the blower here, for he is also controlling the inner thickness of the sides so that they will be right for the cutters. While the master blower is making the bowl of the decanter, another craftsman is making the foot. This will not be blown, as it must remain solid. Instead, it has to be shaped. When the foot is finished, it is ready to join the bowl. In the molten state, the two pieces of glass fuse as one. Now it's beginning to look like a decanter. The neck is now reheated and the final master can work his art. It takes four craftsmen and their seven assistants to blow a claret decanter. Every piece of Waterford is the work of a team like this. And there are more hands waiting to complete it. First comes the wedge cutter. the turn of the flat cutter. When the stopper has been cut, it must also be ground. Each stopper is individually fitted to a particular decanter and it must be hand-worked to create a perfect airlock.
When the piece reaches the last of several inspections, it has come through a long and complex process. Hours and hours of skill, care, and experience. And when it passes this final scrutiny, it receives the stamp and seal of approval that make it part of a distinguished tradition. The blowers are the masters of molten glass. In heat and flame, theirs is a virtuoso performance. The skill of the blower is completed by the skill of the mold maker. This is another of the ancient Waterford crafts, the craft of woodwork. The mold maker uses a template or pattern to make sure that the shape is exactly right. On a large piece, he must turn the block over and finish it from the other side. The mold is now almost ready for the blower. After a piece of glass is blown, it's still three times hotter than boiling water. It must spend hours in a gradual cooling process before it can be handled. And then it meets the first of many inspections. Things can go out of shape in the cooling process. When they do, the glass is rejected. The cap by which the glass was attached to the blowing iron is now removed. It's a diamond that makes the cut, but once again, it's heat that completes the process. There's a lot of good crystal discarded at this stage, though some of it will be used for another purpose. The rims are now reheated to make them smooth once more, but not all of the glass survives this stage either. After another cooling, there's another inspection. But there's one part of the Waterford process where human skill and care have been replaced by high technology.
The mixing of the raw materials is the one area in which computers have improved on age-old methods. It's the unusual weight and softness of Waterford crystal that allow it to be blown and cut in such a special way. Now, there is absolute precision in the mixture of the ingredients. Sand. Potash. Red oxide. But when these are mixed, there is one further ingredient. Cullet. Crystal that has already been blown and then crushed. It helps the mixture to fuse perfectly, and it comes from a variety of sources. The caps that were removed earlier, and pieces rejected for shape. But there's one other source of cullet, and an expensive one. Even in the final stages of a complex piece of cutting, things can go wrong. And there are no Waterford seconds. These are the raw materials. But crystal begins even before that. Every piece of Waterford originates as an idea in the mind of a designer. Someone who understands glass and what can be done with it. When a new glass is to be made, the designer sketches a number of different shapes from which one is finally chosen. This will be the Carina goblet. Then, the designer draws the plan for the blowers, how thick the walls of the glass should be. And a plan for the cutters, where the facets should be made. Then, the glass becomes a reality. The Carina Suite, Lismore, Kilberry. The designers have created a wealth of stemware and giftware, and things for all occasions. From long before electricity, Waterford was holding a light to the world, and it continues to do so today with lighting for the modern home and for places of prestige everywhere. Westminster Abbey in London. And the Kennedy Center in Washington. It takes at least eight years to become a master blower. And the beginner has a long road ahead. The skill of the masters makes it all look easy, but the novice discovers that molten glass is a most difficult medium. And so is cold crystal. The first steps of the novice cutter are also slow and halting. After three years, the apprentice is gaining in control and confidence. But the big test is yet to come. After five years, the apprentice must face the challenge of a specially designed bowl, one which contains every cut in the repertoire. If he passes the test, he becomes fully qualified. This is the initiation rite of a Waterford cutter. When the apprentice succeeds, he becomes a craftsman in his own right, and he keeps the bowl as a memento of his coming of age. The master cutters have their challenges too. Every year, they are given time off from production work to create major pieces of their own design. These are unique creations, one of a kind, sought after by collectors. And so are the limited editions, pieces of which only a designated number are made.
great achievements in many fields are increasingly being recognized with Waterford trophies. This is another of the crystal arts, the art of the engraver. With a copper wheel and a carborundum paste, the engraver can create a picture in crystal. It takes weeks of patient work, after years of experience, to engrave a piece as complex as this. A prize worthy of great achievement. But the maestro of Waterford is Merrick Havel. He has worked here since 1947, for many years as chief designer. He spends all his time on works of his own creation or on prestige commissions. He is the supreme sculptor in crystal. Havel's work has been exhibited around the world and it's prized by connoisseurs of crystal. Friday evening at Waterford Crystal, the changing of the pots. Over the next 36 hours, the flames of the furnace will turn sand and potash and oxide into molten glass. And the craftsmen of Waterford will turn that into the shape and sparkle of crystal. 200 years after it began, the celebration of light continues.